What's going on guys, McSkillet here with another CSGO video, and today I'm going to be doing a full review on the new Operation Pass for CSGO. I'm going to try to go over all of the main things it adds, show off the new challenge coins for all three tiers, because you can actually test those out if you know how to edit the game files correctly, so I'll be showing those to you guys. And I'll also be talking about the new Blitz missions and uh, basically the ranking system. It's pretty similar to Operation Bloodhound. There's a couple things that have changed, and I'll also be doing the top five most expensive drops in this video. And um, surprisingly, the prices on tons of the skins have changed since my last top five most expensive drops video for the Bloodhound drops because there was the M4ONS nerf, Dragon Lord duping, a whole bunch of stuff that changed the prices on those. So the list is a bit different now, so I'll be showing that at the end of this video, but let's get into this video now. All right, so if you get the Operation Pass, it obviously gives you access to the campaign missions, and there are some limits on how much of these you can do in a certain amount of time. You may have to wait a bit if you complete a bunch of missions, but if you complete the little missions, they're basically just little objectives. Some of them are probably pretty annoying if it's like the Bloodhound missions, but if you complete enough of them, you can level up this challenge coin. The one that everyone gets, all you have to do is purchase the pass to get this one right here, is the bronze coin, and this is honestly pretty awesome looking, probably my favorite challenge coin so far, and this is only the bronze one. And you can check your status on earning the next coin if you open up these little journals here, and as you can see, you need 9 stars to get the silver coin. So once you have 9 stars, you will get the silver coin right here, which is the second level for the Operation 7 or the Operation Wildfire coin. And you of course can equip these, and it shows up on your profile. Silver one is uh, not the best looking. If you're going to try to level this up, I would honestly just try to get all the way to gold because, I don't know, the silver one's not nearly as cool as the gold one, but the gold one is pretty awesome. And for the gold one, you need a total of 22 stars, I believe. Um, I actually loaded up the Operation Journal with a silver coin, and as you can see it says you need 14 more stars, and of course you need 8 stars to get the silver one, so 22 stars total, but if you get all 22 stars, you will get the awesome uh, Wildfire coin right here, the Golden Operation Wildfire coin, but again, um, a lot of these missions are probably really tedious. There was one mission in Operation Bloodhound where you had to get like over a million score in casual, which I do not know how someone could actually take the time to do that. It would just take so long and casual is not the best game mode. But you can get these coins without doing every single mission, so make sure you try to pick the ones that are easier and not so tedious and boring. Alright, so now let's get into the whole XP bar thing. Of course, this is completely separate with your competitive rank, as a lot of you guys probably know. To be honest, the best way to rank up is just to make sure you play the game once a week and you get your weekly drop in. Because whenever you're eligible for a drop, of course, you can check if you're eligible for a drop by just highlighting over your XP bar and it will say if you have a new drop or not. I currently don't have one, I just got mine. But you can also check right there if your weekly XP boost is active. And if your weekly XP boost is active, that's a great time to play because this is not just a small boost, it is a massive boost. It will make a giant difference on how much you rank up. You'll rank up so much faster for the little XP bar in game. So if you're trying to rank up fast, the best way is just to make sure you always get your games in when you have your weekly XP boost. You can just play competitive. Competitive is actually a pretty good game mode for just ranking up the XP bar. A lot of the missions and challenges don't actually give you too much XP. And a lot of you guys are probably wondering about the new Blitz mode, where you basically get a, an increased amount of XP for each round that you win in competitive, but you have to play a certain map, and it's uh, usually the new Operation maps, I believe. So I played a game on there, I won 11 rounds, and I got basically no extra, P for, extra XP for it. This is li literally how little XP it gave me, basically nothing compared to the total amount that I got from that game. So I really would not recommend playing the Blitz mode, unless it's your unless it's a map that you really want to play on because it kind of limits what map you're able to play just some of the operation maps and it gives you still a little XP and unless you really know the map and you enjoy the map I wouldn't recommend doing the blitz missions because they really do so little to actually increase your overall XP it's like just a tiny tiny bit of extra XP but it limits what map you can play so that's what the blitz missions do not the most useful all right so for the rest of the video I will be talking about the drops going over every single skin you can get in a drop. And basically, if you don't know how to get your drop, you can get one drop a week. Again, it kind of goes with your weekly XP boost. 
and you should see if you're eligible for a drop whenever you highlight over that, but you should be getting one drop a week. I'm not entirely sure when they reset it because I think it kind of changed in the last operation when they were resetting it, but eventually you should be able to get your weekly drop. So the six collections you can get your drop from are the same from the Bloodhound operation if you guys are familiar with those. So the first collection is the cash collection. This collection probably has the cheapest of all the weapons because there's only purple skins and the categories below that. There is no pink skins or red skins from the cash collection, so there's nothing super rare. Also, it's relatively easy to get all these skins in the factory new condition. So none of these skins are too expensive. Stuff from the cash collection, unfortunately, isn't worth nearly as much as the other collections. So the next collection is the Chop Shop collection. And then, again, getting a really good drop from one of these weekly drops is extremely rare. I've never gotten a skin worth more than a dollar from these, but if you get lucky, you get an M4 Hot Rod, which is over $100, and it's also just as rare as the Glock Twilight Galaxy. The Glock and the M4-1S are both pink skins, except the Glock's only worth like 20 to $30, and the Hot Rod is worth over 100 But also, if you get a P250 Whiteout or a 5.7 Nitro in the factory new condition, you also will luck out, because those are both really rare skins to get in the factory new condition. In fact, a P250 Whiteout factory new is the most expensive skin in this collection, even though it's only a blue, but it's worth $160 right now just because of how rare it is. So the next collection is the Gods and Monsters collection, and pretty much all the skins in these collections have gone down in price since the new operation launch, so you might be able to get a lot of these skins for a lot cheaper than what they were before the operation, because I guess people are panic selling and there's more being dropped, but we have the M4-1S Icarus Fell in this collection, and that skin's only $100 now, even though it used to be $180, even over $200 at one point, but that skin is at like an all-time low price right now, I believe. There's also the M4-A4 Poseidon, which is what trades up to the Aunt Medusa, and the Aunt Medusa is the red skin from this collection. The only thing I don't like about the Aunt Medusa really is it's kind of it's somewhat bland for a red skin in the first place, but also the other thing about it is the wear on the Amadusa makes basically no difference. So a factory new one looks basically identical to a field tested one because it's only brightness changes with the wear on the Amadusa. And the Overpass collection is also back. There's a couple nice skins from here, but unfortunately the most expensive skin in here was the M41S Masterpiece, which has gone down in price a ton. Well, I guess fortunately if you're trying to get the skin, but if you had the skin before, this skin's worth a lot less than it used to be. It's less than $200 for the factory new one, even though it used to be over $300. So uh, skins in here aren't as, aren't as expensive as they used to be. There's basically just the factory new pink DD Pat and the M41S Masterpiece, which are the expensive ones. And the next collection is actually the Rising Sun collection, and this is actually one of my favorite collections in CSGO, besides the Og Akihabara. Not the biggest fan of that skin, but I know some other people really like it, but this collection's got a lot of cool pistols in it. Definitely some of the best pistol skins in the game. It's also got the M4A4 Daybreak and the AK Hydroponic, which in the factory new condition with a decent float, those are really nice looking skins. And finally, the legendary collection itself is back. The Cobblestone Collection with the Op Dragon Lord, the M4A1S Knight. But really all the value in this collection is just on the Op Dragon Lore, the M4-1S Knight, and some of the purple skins are only worth a good amount because you can use these to trade up to the Op Dragon Lore eventually. And the Op Dragon Lore is also at a very low price right now compared to what it used to be. I believe the factory new lures are less than $1,100, even though the skin used to be over $1,500 for a factory new one. So that's because there's a lot of people that have been duplicating Dragon Lore, so the price of that has gone down a lot. And the M4-1S Knight's also gone down a bit since the new operation was uh, put out. I guess a lot of people are starting to get knights and drops again. And I've actually seen one knight dropped in a game. There was actually someone that got a factory new M4-1S Knight in a matchmaking game with me. So that was pretty crazy. That's the best drop I've ever seen. But if you guys want a quick top, a quick top five rundown on the five most expensive skins, here it is. All right, so again, the chances of you getting one of these skins are pretty much non-existent. Again, I've only seen one nice drop in all of my matchmaking games, and that was for the M4-1S Knight. But at number five, if you get super lucky, you can get an M4-A4 Poseidon from the Gods and Monsters Collection. Factory new, $219 right now. Pretty nice skin for the M4-A4 as well. Definitely one of my favorites. Now for the M4-1S Knight, the current price on this is $280 for a factory new. 
Sometimes you might see the minimal wear one trying to sell for more expensive on the steam market and that's because it's a lot rarer to get in the minimal wear condition but it's a lot more useful in the factory new condition because you can use it to trade up to a better condition dragon lore so a uh, factory new one is really just better than the minimal wear just less rare though but either way it's 281 dollars and all the value of this is because it can trade up to the op dragon lore which is a very highly hyped skin that a lot of people want and the third most expensive skin currently is the aug akihabara sept factory new and i sold this one 750 dollars for basically a worst float possible on an aug akihabara so 750 dollars plus i would say if your aug akihabara has a 0 0.01 or lower float you could probably sell it for over a thousand dollars at this point lots of weeaboos really want this skin apparently i've um, just been selling at crazy prices for a factory new one and at number two we have the op dragon lore and you're probably a little surprised right here because normally the op dragon lore is the easy top most expensive skin you can get from a drop but again, I have a whole video on the whole duplication exploit, so if you want to check that out to understand why the Dragon Lore has dropped in price a lot, and basically that and the new operation coming out and people panic selling Dragon Lures like crazy has brought the price down a lot, so the factory new one is almost less than $1,000. Now for the new number one, we have the Aunt Medusa Factory New, which is $1,180 for the cheapest one on OP skins or bit skins right now, and I've sold one for around this price in key, so I would say that's pretty accurate, but it's a pretty rare skin to get the Aunt Medusa in the factory new condition. And the main reason behind the Op Medusa factory new actually passing the Op Dragon Lore factory new price is because the Op Medusa is much, there's much less of the factory new Op Medusas than there is for the Op Dragon Lore. That's because the Op Medusa factory new has not been duplicated nearly as much as the Op Dragon Lore factory new. I believe there's well over a thousand factory new Op Dragon Lores known to exist and there's, there was less than a hundred Op Medusa factory news the last time I checked. So the Op Medusa is 10 times rarer at the moment. It's basically the same odds to get one factory. Actually, it's even slightly rarer to get one in a drop for a factory new one in the first place. But the Op Medusa factory new looks pretty much identical to a field tested Op Medusa, which is not the case on the Dragon Lore. The factory new Op Dragon Lore looks a lot better than the field tested Op Dragon Lore. So, uh, the Op Medusa is really just more expensive due to the rarity, not the looks for the factory new condition. But that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Hopefully this cleared up everything about the new operation, new drops, new XP system, and the new operation challenge coins. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'm Skillet, and I'm out.